And if it's a good recording, I might put it on my YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. Should we make some, 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 some? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> It depends on how well it goes. If I if I mess up a lot, then I'll just uh, I'll just uh, put it online and, and uh, unlisted video only for those who are allowed to access it. All right, now it's uh, time to start, and uh, I'm presenting paper uh, that I've been thinking about for uh, maybe like seven years, but I haven't had the time to write. And then I got a really uh, a bright student, Reza. To, to work on this, this problem with me. And uh, he is the first author, but he had visa issues, so he couldn't come basically because of the pandemic. Everyone is applying for US visa at the same time. And he got to know that he gets to come to the conference in uh, March. And then he immediately applied for visa and they offered him an interview time in September for the uh, visa application, which is not helpful. So, so here we are, but uh, I'll tape it for him. And, um, the paper is about uh, entrepreneurial orientation and we talk about conceptual issues and measurement issues. So this is uh, partly about uh, the theory of what EO is and it's partly about methods. So this builds on, on some things that I've done on the methodological grounds and apply uh, on the methodological area and applies it to EO. And, um, we talk about concepts and, and measurement because you can't really talk about measurement unless you are also willing to define what exactly it is that you want to measure. So, uh, and, and this is a bit of problematic because we identify that there's a mismatch on what is the concept of EO and how it's actually measured. And then there are some issues uh, about the measurement process and modeling process itself that is the main part of our paper. So, so what is EO? EO has been typically either defined as uh, something that uh, uh, is really the proactive as innovative and risk taking or it has been defined as something else but measured through these three dimensions, proactiveness, innovativeness, and risk-taking. There is also the five-dimensional conceptualization, but we focus only on these three dimensions for simplicity. All that I say also applies to autonomy and competitive aggr aggressiveness, but including those in the paper would just make it longer without really adding to the argument. And uh, we point out conceptual and empirical issues in this practice. And what we argue, what is the punchline of the paper, is that we probably should severe the link between EO and these three dimensions in empirical research practice. The reason being basically is that innovativeness, proactiveness and risk taking all have independent effects on outcomes. So innovativeness has effects on performance independently of EO. And if we measure a uh, measure model, innovativeness as a component of EO, we are confounding the EO concept with the independent effects of innovativeness. Okay, let's take a look at the background of the paper and I'm just gonna skim through the background. The idea of, of EO was originally that it, it was kind of like an, a, a label for a collection of attributes. So it started from uh, Miller's 1984 paper where he was just looking for indicators or correlates of entrepreneurship. So he, he was not thinking about an, an concept of it's a concept that exists on its own, but simply a collection of, of traits like you might think about a talented person would have certain traits and talent itself might not be something that you are interested in, but you're just referring to this, this collection. And then after, uh, in, a, in somewhere uh, late, 90, uh, late 80s, early 90s, EO started to have kind of like theoretical uh, existence of its own independently of these dimensions. So that's the background. And there are uh, uh, three conceptual issues uh, about how we define EO that we talk about in the paper. The, First problem is that how we understand entrepreneurship has evolved over time, but EO has not kept up. <laughs> so if we call something entrepreneur orientation, then it must be related to entrepreneurship. Otherwise, we are just confusing everybody. But uh, entrepreneurship, what it refers to, has been shifting. So, so we. Uh, Reza collected these other, these various uh, things that entrepreneurship has been uh, identified with. And uh, when 
Miller did his work, entrepreneurship was about creating new organizations, uh, entering new markets. It was more about these, these actions and maybe uh, some kind of processes. But nowadays uh, we, we look at uh, it instead of a process or a trait, we look, it, look at entrepreneurship more as, as a practice. So uh, the conceptualization of, e of entrepreneurship has shifted. We look more at opportunities instead of new organizations or new entries to new markets. And EO has been basically the same three dimensions since Miller's work and it has not, not kept up. So uh, entrepreneurship has been going there and EO is going there. So we have an increasing disconnection between these two concepts. Then we talk about uh, dispositional versus behavioral aspect of EO. And this uh, uh, was highlighted in Anderson's 2015 paper where he talks about EO as containing two dimensions uh, behaviors and uh, dispositions which contain attitude uh, toward risk and behaviors contain proactiveness and innovativeness. The, the problem with this uh, disposition versus behavioral is that dispositions and behaviors are not the same. So uh, they are causally related. So we have dispositional EO and behavioral EO that are both uh, referred to as EO. And this causes confusion because then a reader of a paper about EO would not know whether that paper is about uh, uh, behaviors or whether it's about dispositions. So there is uh, uh, referring to both cause and effect using the same term is potentially confusing. Then there is the third question, which is perhaps the most important conceptual question in our paper. And uh, it is the link between EO and, and innovativeness. And uh, this relates to the area of philosophy called meteorology, which uh, relates to part-whole relationships. And uh, there, are very, there are two extremes uh, that we can, we can think of. One is that, that the EO is simply a convenient label for innovativeness, risk-taking and proactiveness and nothing more. So EO is simply a sum of these parts. And then uh, the other extreme is EO exists independently of these dimensions and these dimensions only uh, exist as measures. EO started basically from here and it has been shifting more to the right, but still the measures we apply for EO are the same. If we apply innovativeness, risk-taking and proactiveness as measures of EO, this causes a problem because not all innovativeness is entrepreneurial, not all entrepreneurship is innovative. So uh, innovativeness has effects uh, that are unique, not depending on entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurial orientation has effects that are not depending on innovativeness. So uh, if we have innovativeness as measure of, uh, of uh, entrepreneurial orientation, we are confounding two different things. The same argument applies to risk-taking and proactiveness. So there are three conceptual issues. One, defining EO through these traits has not kept up with our evolving conceptualization of what entrepreneurship is. So we think about entrepreneurship differently now, but our thinking about EO has not kept pace. Defining EO as dispositional concept or behavior concept is confusing and it's not uh, according to good scientific practice where uh, one label should refer to one concept. It is a uh, Confusing are uh, to refer, use the same label or same concept for two different meanings depending on the content, context. And innovativeness, proactiveness, risk taking are problematic as measures because or, uh, they have independent, uh, independent existence of EO. Of course, not all researchers define EO in terms of these, uh, these dimensions, but they are still used as measures. And uh, now we go to the main part of the paper, which is. Uh, empirical issues in uh, EO measurement slash modeling. And uh, there is currently a debate and uh, has been a debate for some years about whether uh, EO should be modeled as reflectively or, or formatively. The idea of, of this uh, 
reflective model is that a firm is innovative or proactive and risk-taking because it is entrepreneurial. So uh, being entrepreneurial causes uh, your company to be high on innovativeness, proactive and risk-taking. And then in the formative uh, conceptualization or formative uh, modeling, the idea is that firm is entrepreneurial because it's innovating, proactive and takes risks. So the, the, the direction of moral causality goes in the different ways. The reflective model has received lots of criticism lately. So this is not realistic because it assumes that the dimensions are highly correlated. They are not empirically correlated. They are expected to share the same causes. That's not very realistic. Innovativeness has different causes than risk taking, for example. They are not, not uniformly caused by the same things. OK, so the formative uh, model is, is gaining popularity. But there are issues that we talk about this in this paper that have gone unnoticed in, in the formative uh, modeling of EO. And we need to understand why this became popular. And it's, uh, the popularity of the formative approach can be attributed to two main papers. There is George 2011 in a uh, journal of, of management, if I remember correctly, assumed that reflective uh, they, he did a study, of a simulation study, where he showed that if you, uh, you misspecify a, a reflective model where a formative model is correct, your estimates are biased by two and a half fold, which is pretty, pretty big bias. And then uh, Anderson continued on that and refers to this as nomological errors. And uh, they do an empirical study where they show that the data do not support the use of reflective model, and they strongly recommend the formative model. But there is a bit of a but to George's argument. And uh, it was shown by, by Agur, Urat, and Maracas in 2012, uh, using in different context, that this bias is actually uh, just a methodological problem related to how latent verbosis are scaling. I will uh, not walk you through the argument. We present it in the paper, and we uh, replicate George's paper, and we show that uh, this uh, bias dimension uh, just goes away, basically, when you consider standardized estimates, which have the same scale between two samples. So, so this is something, uh, one problem that we talk about in the paper. Then there's another problem called interpretation of confounding. This is discussed in the methodological literature, but it's not discussed in the EO literature. The, the problem is that when we have this kind of formative model, we estimate these weights, so innovators, proactive, and risk taking, we estimate them uh, for each sample, for each study separately. So we would think that uh, originally EO was a sum of these items, but nowadays we actually use a weighted sum. So one study might have innovators, proactive risk-taking all weighted equally. Another study might have risk-taking weighted it 10 times more than innovators, proactiveness. Another study might have innovation weighted 10 times more than proactiveness and risk-taking. So are these studies really focusing or uh, talking about the same thing? If in one study EO is innovativeness 90%, another study EO is 80% uh, risk-taking, do these talk about the same things empirically? Then, of course, uh, we might have scenarios, and we do have scenarios, where risk-taking particularly has a negative effect. So one study says that EO is, is positively related to risk. They define EO as, as positive correlate of risk. Another study defines EO as a negative correlate of risk. So what do we expect when we have this kind of, of models? Another thing that has been uh, not addressed in the EO literature uh, that is discussed in the methodological literature uh, comes from Rigdon's research that's not cited on, on the slides, but uh, he explains this really well. It's explained in the paper, is that if we have the formative conceptualization, innovative as proactive as risk-taking, uh, they cause EO, which then causes different outcomes. This model assumes that the effects of innovative and proactive risk taking are always at the same proportions. So if risk taking is twice as important determinant of some outcome compared to innovativeness, then it must be twice as important uh, determinant of any other outcome. That does not sound very realistic. And this is something that, that uh, means also that they, the dimensions are interchangeable, this model. So it means that if you lack innovativeness, you can compensate for by increasing your risk taking. And that's because EO is 
measured, modeled as a weighted sum. And you, can, you know from high school, from elementary school math, that if you take a sum of two things, if you lack one thing, you can increase the other thing, and that increases the, makes the sum the same. So uh, we build on Anderson's argument, uh, who says that our EO dimensions don't co-vary in a way that would uh, support the reflective model. We argue that they don't co-vary with the outcomes in a way that would support the use of the formative model. And we, we test this with meta-analysis. So what we do in the paper is that we collect uh, various studies and we collect the effect sizes of these three different dimensions of those studies that study the effects of innovative risk-taking and proactiveness separately. We um, run a, a model, we test the hypothesis that the proportions are constant across studies, uh, this hypothesis is strongly rejected. So the effects are not the same for every possible outcome, which is pretty obvious, but we need to support it with data. Then there is a third problem. So, so we had a problem of interpretational confounding, we had a problem of full mediation, which is not supported, and, and we had this interesting problem still uh, called identification problem. I will not talk about the technical issue here, but this model requires that you have two reflective indicators for the formatively measured latent variable. The, the problem is, and this comes from Aguirre Oretas and, and my research uh, published in measurement, the problem is that in this case, the empirical meaning of entrepreneur orientation does not come from these dimensions at all. It comes from these two indicators. And uh, we show this by replicating Anderson's paper. So we generate data set that is, has the same covariances that they have, so it produces the same results. So we reproduce their results using synthetic data. And then we test what happens if we have uh, two reflective indicators and, and two of uh, these formative dimensions that are not related. So does they are the result of uh, EO on performance, does that effect depend on how the EO dimensions relate to performance or does it depend on how these identification indicators determine performance? We show that if these three two indicators that we just add for identification purposes, if they are not related to performance at all, all performance effects disappear. So. Uh, it means that these uh, behaviors or uh, these effects of the dimensions and per EO and performance, they disappear because EO is not in this model defined as a, a sum of these dimensions. Rather, it's a, a latent variable with two reflective measures. We also saw by re replicating another scenario where uh, EO dimensions are unrelated to performance and we show that uh, when, uh, the, when performance is considered, if the, uh, the indicators that are used for identification are not related to performance, there is no effect. If EO dimensions are not related to performance, there is no difference. We can also freely leave out all the EO dimensions and the result will not change. So we leave uh, no EO dimensions, we leave unfair behaviors away, we leave attitude away from the model. The result does not change. It shows that these kind of models don't measure the latent variable through the dimensions. Okay, so we showed a couple of problems in the current practice in modeling EO in the paper. So what do we do with unpaired orientation? Uh, we have a couple of key arg arguments and this is something that we are still working on before we submit this to a journal. Uh, our key claim, our key recommendation is that we should stop forcing on uh, these dimensions into a single latent variable because they don't have the same causes and same consequences. Innovative as proactive and risk-taking are separate variables and they should be modeled separately. The next thing that we think about is maybe we should retard the concept of EO. So if we have uh, EO and uh, it, we use EO to reserve, uh, refer to organizational level entrepreneurial behaviors, why don't just call them organizational entrepreneurial behaviors our organizational entrepreneurial dispositions instead of EO, which is uh, pretty vague as a term. And then we think also that maybe we should go back to the rules to Miller's work 
and use EO simply as a convenient index. So sometimes you have so many variables and maybe entrepreneurship is just a minor thing in your paper that an index of these dimensions might be a crude measure like Miller did. And, but calling this as, as EO would be a bit problematic because the term has some theoretical meaning. So maybe we should just then call it as entrepreneurship index instead of EO. Thank you. <laughs> Any thoughts or questions? Do you have a hunch how this could be, well, you talked about now a mixture of, of empirical and conceptual things. When we now take a look on what has been done so far, so is there anything that we could do better, for instance, when we now, when we replicate the study that has been done already, from the, or, only empirically speaking, mm -hmm. so would it be helpful to, to uh, model a second latent factor, an unmeasured latent factor, something like that? This, would it be helpful to, um, I don't know, to, to, to uh, loosen some covariance between the indicators of, you know, would it be, well, do you have any, any um, ideas in this regard or is that simply, you know, yeah, I would. Meaning, meaningless. Or, or I'm not saying that EO is meaningless. EO clearly has meaning as a theoretical, con theoretical concept, but the measurement approach is problematic. Yeah. And uh, if you have the three measures, e innovative, proactive, and risk taking, mm -hmm. I would think that it's very important to understand under which conditions each of those has the uh, positive and negative effects instead of lumping them together as one thing. Mm -hmm. This builds on, on Edward's argument in uh, 2001 in organization research methods uh, where, where he points out that, that typically when field matures we start with these, these very abstract concepts and then we start modeling dimensions. Yeah. And EO is pretty mature already so maybe we should start uh, move toward uh, looking at the individual dimensions instead of uh, lumping them together. So that's the, for, as far as replications go I think that's what we should do. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Entrepreneur orientation clearly uh, needs a bit more of a conceptual refinement, like, uh, like uh, unification. There are so many different ways of defining EO. And uh, maybe we should also sp start talking about like, like not, not having this uh, dispositional EO, attitudes, uh, behavioral EO, uh, individual level EO, uh, what, 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 what not EO, and, and just use different terms to avoid confusing. Have you seen any papers that, that, that do this, that move away already, or...? A minority of papers uh, do model the dimensions separately, and that allowed us to do the meta-analysis to check how much the effects vary between studies. Mm -hmm. But most studies uh, lump them together and don't necessarily report the, the formative weights. So there might be a, a structural ecosystem model where risk taking has a negative effect on EO and it's called an EO that is defined through risk taking and yet the, the effect is negative, which is so inconsistent with the theory. We have uh, developed the paper quite a lot since the RDM submission. If someone wants to read the most recent version, I can send it by email. Okay. All right. Yeah. Time is also up. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome.